Have you wanted to learn more about the moon? Well, you're in the right place. In this video, I'm first going to talk about the phases of the moon, then solar and lunar eclipses, and then other interesting things you can see with the moon, including supermoons, blue moons, blood moons, and more. The phases of the moon, in order from new moon to full moon to new moon again, are waxing crescent, first quarter moon, waxing gibbous, full moon, waning gibbous, third quarter moon, waning crescent, and the new moon. So why did I say waxing and waning a bunch of times? What does that all mean? Well, waxing is when the moon is getting bigger. So like say one day you see the moon and uh, this is the full disk of the moon and there's this much of the moon, like the small part, like this part is illuminated. Then the next day, some more of it is illuminated. So this means it's a waxing moon. The other way around means it's a waning moon because waxing means getting bigger and waning means getting smaller. There are two different kinds of eclipses, solar eclipses and lunar eclipses. Those are eclipses of the sun and the moon, respectively. Let's talk about solar eclipses first. A solar eclipse happens when, from our perspective here on Earth, the moon blocks the sun in its shadow, okay? There are three kinds of solar eclipses, partial, total, and annular. A partial solar eclipse is where, as the name suggests, the moon blocks part of the sun and there's no place on earth where it blocks all of the sun. In a total solar eclipse, then the, there is a place on earth uh, where the, the sun is fully blocked by the moon and in some other places it looks like a partial eclipse. Then there's an annular eclipse. This one is a little bit harder to explain, so I'll just try to explain it. Basically, in the sky, the moon and the sun are quite similar sizes, okay? And when the moon's orbiting around the Earth, the orbit isn't perfectly circular. It's a bit elliptical, almost like if this, my finger is the Earth, then the moon does sort of like this. I don't know how well you can see that, but yeah. Anyways, um... If the moon is at the farthest point of the shadow, the farthest point of the orbit from Earth, and then a solar eclipse happens at that very moment, then the moon will be smaller than the sun, so there'll still be a ring of like sun that you can see even if the moon's in the center. So the reason it's called annular is because it happens approximately once every year. Oh, and by the way, Never look into a solar eclipse. It's dangerous unless, you know, you've talked with an expert and, you know, they approve it. Anyways, moving on to lunar eclipses, also sometimes called blood moons. So, a lunar eclipse is where the Earth shadows the moon from the sun, okay? So again, there's partial and total um, eclipses depending on which part of the shadow the moon passes through. Also, I, um, yeah, th there are two different kinds of shadows, the penumbra and the antumbra, oh no, sorry, the penumbra and the umbra. So the penumbra is where, um, like, it, less light is blocked than in the umbra, and the umbra, more light is blocked, and it's normally in the center. You can see that sometimes when the sun's beating down and you're making a shadow, sometimes you'll see almost like three figures of yourself, two lighter ones and one darker one. That's because of the different kinds of shadows, the penumbra on each side and the umbra in the middle. So anyways, from that, a partial lunar eclipse is where the moon passes through the penumbra of Earth and a total lunar eclipse is where it passes through the umbra. And this can, these can cause it to have a bit of a rusty red color, which is why it gets the name Blood Moons. Now we get to the fun part. We're going to be talking about different moon phenomena, starting with the supermoon. Remember when I told you that the moon's orbit was elliptical? 
Yeah, so when the moon is at the closest point to the earth, or near the closest point to the earth, and it's a full moon, it looks a little bigger in the sky. And that's a super moon. Next, a blue moon. So this is when um, there are two full moons in a month. And then the second one is called the blue moon, which, and it happens once every two years, which is where the expression once in a blue moon stems from. Although now it has a different meaning to once in two years, it now means once in like an eternity. Then there's black moons, um, which may sound, you know, dangerous and all, but like, and sinister, but it's just when there are four new moons in a month, uh, in a season, sorry. Normally there are three. So when there's four in a season, then the third one is called a black moon, okay? Um, then remember I already said about blood moons, that's just an informal term for a total lunar eclipse. Then there's a purple moon, which refers to a blue moon in April. Now, April, has 30 days, which makes it a lot rarer for a blue moon to happen. Why? The lunar cycle is approximately 29 and a half days, which means that, you know, every 29 and a half days, there is a full moon. So that means that um, on months, on months, on all months except for February, if there's you know, um, a full moon on one of you, like the first days of the month, then there might be one on like the last uh, day or two. But because April is one, so if so, because April is one of the ones with only 30 days, then this means because, well, if there's 31 days in a month, then that means that there's, you know, a 1.5 day tolerance uh, from the start and the end of the month. Where the full moon can be the full moon can be one point the first full moon can be 1.5 days away from the start for the second one to be a blue moon on 31 day months on 30 day months however it's three times rarer because there's only a half a day tolerance i'm gonna call it tolerance so because of that we can actually um calculate the rarity of some of these different events so a super moon happens once every three to four months. A blue moon happens once every two years um, on average. So from that, if we take the, uh, the blue moon one, so that's two years, right? And then the average likelihood for one to happen in a month, you know, you would, um, you would uh, divide that by, or multiply that number of years by 12 since they're 12 months. So then you get 24 years, but that's not it. Um, remember when I said that, um, it was like, uh, three times, um, more likely for it to happen on a 31 day month than a 30 day month? Well, we're assuming there's the same number of 31 and 30 day months. This can't be because of February, but then basically it would be around every, I'm actually doing this math in my head right now because I forgot to prepare for it every maybe 40 years ish that um you would get a purple moon so remember i said that was a blue moon in april so anyways there's an exciting event coming up this month so right now it's um august 2023 and on the 30th of august there's a blue moon okay so what you might be uh, thinking, there's one every two years. Well, this isn't any blue moon. It's also a super moon. And this combination happens on average once every 10 years. Now, a few years ago, in 2018, there was a super flower blue blood moon. A super blue blood moon. One of those two, I can't remember which. It'll be above my head right now. Um, and that happens once every 37 years, I've calculated. So that's it for today. I hope you had I hope you enjoyed watching this video and thanks for watching. Goodbye. Like and subscribe or else.